Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video going to be talking about my ASIC mining strategy, going to kind of just go over what I look at when I'm looking at hardware and what I'm doing with my yield, right? Especially looking forward into the bull market, right? So this isn't going to be like an end all be all strategy. It's just my strategy and maybe something for you to think about if you haven't thought about it already, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. Um, before we get too far, though, none of this is financial advice, number one. Number two, a lot, a lot of risk with ASICs. If you are considering getting ASICs, please do your research. There is a lot to think about, a lot to consider in, because these things aren't cheap, right? If you have a lot of disposable income, that's one thing, but... For me, you know, dropping 5K on an ASIC is a huge friggin' thing, right? So it all kind of depends on your outlook on things, but you really, really got to research not only the profitability, but what the likelihood of a newer, better unit coming out, um, the effect on the hash rate and the difficulty, how that's going to affect your future rewards, right? You can't think of just now. You have to look at what's going to happen in the future. Good examples, you know, these KA3s that came out. Initially, it was going to be 50 bucks a day. But now we see it's about $8 a day, which is in line with what we were talking about with all those previous videos I did, right? These are all things you got to think about, all things you got to research, right? So research, research, research. Think of it. See if it makes sense to you, right? So let's get to it, though. So my biggest things when I was looking at hardware, the reason I chose what I chose is, number one, I want the latest and greatest, okay? I'm not going to be messing around with old hardware. I don't want to have to worry about a bigger, better unit coming out in three months after I just dropped, you know, four or five, six thousand on this unit, right? So my target was latest and greatest, okay? Especially when I saw Bitman get into the game and specifically that KA3. That's what kind of changed everything for me because it was just such a huge freaking gain over the gold shell and Ivy Link units, okay? That was like mind blowing how big of a drastic change that was, right? And it's because they have access to those five nanometer chips and it just blew everything out of the water. Not only in efficiency, but also power. I mean, looking at this chart here on Mind the ASIC, as we predicted, that KA3 on a 10 cent kilowatt hour is the only profitable miner on the network. Okay. Same with the K7. Same exact story. Okay. Literally almost even the same efficiency gains. Okay. Why? And again, it's because Bitmain has access to those chips. Okay, so for me, jumped right in, right? Especially with the KA3, I was already bullish on Kadena. Still am, I know it's been stagnant, but that's a whole other story. But that's the reason I chose those, right? Because realistically, whatever Gold Show releases this year probably will still not be able to compete. Maybe next year they'll release something that competes. But by then, who cares? Because we're going to probably be already in the having. And the price will probably be through the roof. Right now, my timeline is to get hardware now, specifically this year. Right? May still be able to get cheap hardware into as late as the spring, although I highly doubt it. Most likely, sometime this year will be the cheapest. Right? When I was harping on and making all those videos back in, you know, early winter, early spring, those may have been some of the best times. Right? But we shall see, you know, there's a lot of variables going on with the economy, possible recession, banks going down, all this stuff. And that can lead to cheaper hardware prices, right? Especially if we have a sustained downtrend, right? So just, you know, stuff to really think about. But that was the biggest thing is that I want the latest and greatest because I need this thing to last, right? I don't need another KD6 scenario where, you know, we spend all this money on one unit and then four months later this KE3 drops and makes that thing a paperweight, Right? So I wanted to get the latest and greatest, and I felt confident in that this thing will be at least a good year, year and a half before something even competes with it, right? And if that does happen, cool, right? So hopefully it works out. We'll see what happens, but realistically, just less likely to get wrecked by going with the latest and greatest, right? Um, the other big thing, like we were kind of talking about, is just that timeline is perfect, Right? We are less than a year from the halving. Realistically, the real bullish action happens about four to six months after the halving. So we're, guess what? About a year and a half away, right? Which 
is probably going to be about the soonest that a replacement comes, at least from Bitmain directly. We'll probably get more competition from Gold Shell. Maybe they'll release something, but realistically, even if Gold Shell does release something a year from now, Bitmain will probably have something better six months from then, right? The reason I'm using the one and a half year reference is that that's about the timeline with these altcoin miners so far, historically, right? Um, the reason I am using the one and a half year mark, though, is that because that was actually what between the dash miners, between the D7 and the D9, the D7 released October 21, this D9 released just now, right? So about a year and a half. So that's what I'm going by as far as the timeline goes, right? So for me, again, latest and greatest, at about a year and a half away. And even if they do release something in a year and a half, it's going to be crazy expensive because we're already going to be into that bullish mode. If things go as planned, of course, none of that stuff is guaranteed. But historically speaking, that's what I'm going by. I'm going by the previous cycles, and that's the timeline that should be happening, right? So again, even if a unit does come out, it's going to probably be like 20, 30, 40K, right? So who cares? I'm not going to be in the market at that point anyway, right? So just something to think about there. So now, okay, I decided, boom, I'm going to get this miner, which again, just because these miners have released doesn't mean that there isn't going to be more to come, right? We're still only in April. Uh, the rumor mill has it that we may get, a, you know, that L9 sometime this fall. I'm sure we may get others. There's going to be other hardware to release, right? So keep your eyes open for that. So just because I jumped into these doesn't mean that those are going to be the only options, right? There still may be others to come. There's still a lot of time left, but just keep your mind open. As soon as you see announcements, start running those numbers, start thinking about those things, see if they make sense, right? But again, ideally, you want to get something now because again, a year and a half, two years from now, when that replacement comes, it's going to be crazy expensive, right? So you want to get it now. All right, so now you decided on your miner. You got your miner. You're hashing away. Now you got to come up with your strategy as far as what you're going to do with your yield or how you're going to pay that electric, right? Because these things are expensive to run, okay? And that's part of the reason that I chose the amount of units I chose was because my personal strategy, again, there's a lot of ways to do this, right? Some people just cash out everything every month. Some people try to keep the majority and they only cash out the electrical. Different strategies there. To me, what makes the most sense, though, is to hold on all your yield. Pay your electrical out of pocket. So the reason I limited myself to the amount that I did is not only because of infrastructure things, but it's just that's the amount I'm comfortable with coming out of pocket every month. Right. My goal is to just hang on to all that yield. OK, because to me, that's how you're going to get the most benefit from mining currently. OK, because right now, this is the time we are going to get the most amount of yield. Okay, even networks that got hit hard, like, oh, you know, Kadena got hit hard, the yields are low, the USD value is low, but the yields are still good. And the yields are going to be good comparing to whatever comes out a year and a half, two years from now. Okay, because as time goes on, guess what? Bitmain's going to do restocks. There's going to be more units. There's going to be a gold shell unit next year, an Ivy Link unit next year. There's going to be more hash rate on the network, meaning your yield is going to go down. Okay, and this is for any project, GPUs, ASICs, whatever. Right now is the time you're going to get the most amount of yield and you want to accumulate as much as you can. Okay. Don't focus on the USD value. Look at your yield. Okay. Because again, so this is where it's going to look different. Also come the bull market. Let's say our bullish scenario does happen and Kadena 10 X's, right? So that USD value is going to look great, but our yield is likely to be a fraction of what it is now. Okay, it's very possible that the difficulty doubles, meaning our yield gets cut in half, even though that USD value is looking good, right? So that's why you to take the advantage of that price appreciation is to get all the coins you can right now. Accumulate, 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 right? That way you can take full advantage of them, right? So that's just my, my mindset on that is to just hang on to as much as possible, right? Just some stuff to think about there. Um, what else? A good example. I know some people like to cash out or whatever, but like a good example is with any of the BTC miners, right? It would make zero sense to get a BTC miner if you're thinking about just getting one unit and you're going to be cashing out to pay electrical because at that point, uh, th that's your profit per day, right? 
which does not look good. But again, you have to not look at the USD value. You have to look at how much BTC you're accruing. Reason being is that, let's say at bare minimum, BTC does a 3x. So instead of making 8 bucks a day, it's making 24 bucks a day. Okay? That's where the real money is made is by holding to on holding on to all that BTC or all that coin, whatever you're mining, right? That's when you're going to get, that's when it makes sense, right? Otherwise, you might as well just buy the freaking coin, okay? Hang on to as much as you can. And this is why it's the primary reason that I ended up not getting any BTC miners. I've been pondering it. I've been wanting one, but it's just that profitability is too low, right? There's less risk there, but there's also less reward. A lot more risk with these altcoin miners, but a lot more possible reward, right? Because even just looking at that same chart with Kadena going under the same guys, I know everybody's like, oh, Kadena got hit so hard. It's crap. It's not worth anything. Again, focus on the yield. Everybody's focusing on the USD value. If you think Kadena will 10x from here, the income, that would bring your income to 150 bucks a day, Right? Even being conservative, to be ultra conservative and we're only going to do a 2x, right? That would bring your income to 30 bucks a day minus your electricity, 22 bucks a day, right? And that's only if Kadena only hits $2, okay? That way you're maximizing that potential in case that does happen because that is possible. So I'm throwing that number out there. I'm like, ah, it's going to go... It's possible, guys. It's possible that we do not get the amount of action that we're thinking of, right? But by holding everything, you reduce your risk, right? Because if you're in that mindset that, oh, it's going to 20x, who cares? I'm going to cash out. I just got to make it till then. You may not get that amount that you're thinking, right? So just some stuff to think about there. Um, so again, I'm going to be holding all of mine. Bull market comes. I'll start slowly de-saying out. It's going to be hard to time these tops and bottoms and it's going to be hard to sell. That's one thing that was extremely, extremely hard. That was probably the hardest thing, period, in crypto is to sell anything, whether it's hardware or coins, because you have that FOMO, right? It's like, oh man, if I sell today, it's going to freaking 10x next week. And it could, right? But you have to be comfortable with what you're doing. So kind of the way I'm DCing in, my strategy is I'll be DCing out. As I see, you know, okay, we hit a 5x, I'll take a little bit out. We hit another 2x from there, I'll take another chunk out. And I'm going to slowly go in and out and see how the timeline goes. That's for the yield. For the hardware, though, I am 100% going to be selling my ASICs in the bull market. And this is a big thing you got to think about. What are you going to do with your hardware? What are you going to do if a bigger, better unit comes out? Okay. And realistically, the exact timeline is going to be more dependent as we get closer, right? If KDA pops off prior to then, I may sell it earlier, right? Same with the K7. If something happens and it pops off, I might just sell my unit earlier than anticipated. But the goal is to sell it before the next one gets announced in order to get the maximum value for this one. Realistically, though, if it pops off anyway, even if another better unit comes out, that unit's probably going to be 30 grand. And even this guy, being the outdated one, will probably at least sell for what I paid for it, right? It should at least sell for that 6K, 8K, 10K, whatever. But again, a lot of it's going to have to do with that price appreciation. If we don't get that price appreciation, then guess what? This guy ain't going to go up either, right? And that's the, the risk to reward thing. But my plan is 100% to sell them. The exact timeline, I don't know. Most likely it's going to be around that year and a half mark. I'm really going to be eyeing it. Okay, because I want to try to get in before the announcement of the next one. But we'll see. Maybe it freaking takes off like crazy and it does do like a 15x. Maybe I hang into it longer, but I'm going to start looking at that. Right. But the plan is 100 percent, though, to sell it in the bull market. Probably about that year and a half mark from now. Maybe a little bit longer, but I'm definitely, definitely going to sell it with the anticipation of just hanging on to that money buying more hardware, probably sitting on the sidelines for a while, right? At that point, I might either just jump into GPUs. If that looks like it's profitable but because there's less risk there, only because that hardware can be resold, it's more multi-purpose, right? Kind of like a good example is even right now. The GPUs are pretty much the same price from what they were after the merge, right? After profitability went to essentially zero or negative right after the merge, 
those 3060 Ti's and 3070's are still in that 3 to 350 range even now. Okay, so it's it's less risk there, so that may be the go-to. I may just hold it, and three months later, the new guy gets announced, and now I use that money to buy that guy. And that way, I do another cycle of basics. That's also a possibility, too. What I do with that profit at that point, it's up in the air. That's more of a see and feel kind of thing. But that's my plan, and it's easy to say it, though. This is one thing I will say that I definitely did learn in the bull market. It is very easy to make these plans and say, yep, I'm going to try to sell the top. It is extremely, extremely hard because we don't know when the top is. And it is very hard to get rid of that FOMO. Okay, What I found does 100% help is making that plan. Do your bullish scenarios, do your bear scenarios, and see if it hits that bullish mark. Right? Is it possible that you miss out and don't hit the exact top? That's the likely story. It's very hard to hit the exact top. Some people do. Some people don't, but you want to be within that range, right? But that's why my plan is to kind of DCA out. Like as I see ranges, as it gets closer to that super bullish scenario, then those percentages that I'm DCAing out are going to go higher and higher. Okay, but it is that was probably the hardest thing of the last bull market is selling. The only reason I made out as well as I did is because my goal was to pay off all the hardware as it was coming out. So I was selling fairly aggressively, and it just happened to work out that way. Right. But if I would have just held everything, I would have just wrote everything up, wrote everything down. Right. But it is very easy to plan and say all this stuff now. But once you are in that bull market, it is very hard. A good example right now is all these people with like this Pepe thing. Right. I wouldn't recommend any of you guys who haven't messed with meme coins or anything like that to get into it. But it's easy to get in and out for me now because I set that plan. I got in threw a hundred bucks in there. Went a little over double, boom, cashed out. Could have gone another 10x from there, maybe, but that wasn't my plan. My plan was just an easy little in and out. And I'm okay with it because that was the plan. Okay, and even right now, taking profits during these times, I was like, oh, why are you taking profit? Because I feel confident in that we're going to go lower. Okay, and so far that has worked out as well. Okay, and that's just the whole trusting your gut thing and the following the markets, that's all on you. But at the end of the day, it's your strategy, what you think is going to work best, and you got to go for it. But again, guys, please make that plan. Planning stuff makes everything so much easier. Profit taking is easier. Rebuying things is easier. It gets the emotion out. And that's, that's the number one thing I will say to get ready for anything. And that's the big reason I'm so big on making plans is because it has helped a ton. Like this bear market has been incredibly profitable. Okay, and it's because of that. I've been comfortable with taking profits. Like as soon as I see that 3x, I'm out. And yes, even right now in this bear market, even with bigger cap coins, right? A big one that started it was like with Gala, with ETH, any of those. As soon as I hit a 2, 3x, pulling profits. That doesn't mean I'm taking all of it out. I'm taking like 20%, 30%, and then rebuying. Like right now, that's been my strategy with HNT and CKB, right? On top of mining it, I've been swing trading and I'm earning so much more by doing that. But it's only because I'm comfortable with taking profits. And I'm okay with, okay, even if I can't rebuy, I'm comfortable with the amount I took. I'll use it to buy some more hardware, do something else with it, or put it towards electrical, something. Right? So you have to come up with strategies, come up with plans, and get the emotion out. Okay? But if you are thinking about, you know, whether it's ASIC mining, GPU mining, Start thinking about these things. Start thinking about what you're going to do in the future. Are you going to hang on to it? Do different things, right? And just another thing to factor in, okay, I'm looking at this miner. Everything makes sense, but I freaking hate Kadena. You can swap out for other coins. You don't have to stay there, right? Like I'm talking to some of you guys, a lot of you guys are not into CKB at all, but you guys jumped into the K7 while I was doing all those videos. And you guys have just been on like nice hash the whole time getting BTC. And that's been an awesome strategy because look at how much BTC went up. And it's way better than any of the actual BTC miners, right? But yet you're using it for that purpose. And that's the the beauty with like, and a lot of people hate nice hash, but even things like unminable, things like that, where you, you're not stuck to that coin, guys. Everybody has it in their head that, ah, I hate Kadena, I hate CKB, like I don't get it. 
If it's profitable and it looks like it's going to be profitable, you did your research, swap into the coin you want, right? That's something you really got to factor in. That doesn't mean you're locked into that coin. Like right now with this HS3, I'm probably going to be whatever profit I'm making is probably going to go into another coin. I'm going to keep a good amount there, but I'm not too bullish on Handshake itself, right? So you do have those options, guys. Just because you're stuck on that algorithm doesn't mean you need to keep those coins. Like if you think, you know, Caspa, I think is going to 20x from here or whatever, whatever. Swap it into Caspa, right? Just look at different things. You're not, you're stuck mining that algorithm, but that doesn't mean you're stuck with that coin. Okay. That's like a small thing that everybody gets like tunnel vision and you kind of forget that. No, guys, you can swap into whatever you want. Okay. So these are just some things to think about, guys. I know it's kind of ranty, but um, if you're thinking about doing it, this is probably the year right? Whether it was this past spring, whether it's the summer or this fall, we get a huge dump. We don't know, but keep your eyes open. Start thinking of price points because everything price-wise is kind of in a weird point, right? We've been pretty much up only for this whole quarter. That's why the prices have been kind of high. They've been stagnant. Good examples with like this KA3. Even right now, profitability has gone down and it's still in that 8 to 9K range. I think Generally, everybody's kind of waiting to see what happens with this market. I'm personally under the guise that this summer we may take a dump. That's kind of what I'm putting my my coins at, I, all the profit I've been taking. I'm hoping we do get a drop. May, will we get it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we don't. Maybe we go and hover in the 40K range for BTC over the summer. Maybe we stay in that range all the way until the halving. That is possible too, and I'm okay with that, right? Because I freaking went in hard. In November, in December, in January, that's when I went in the hardest. Pretty much most of this year, it's just my forced DCA with mining has been my only, not my only, but like 90% of my accrual, right? Between this, hardware, added those FPGAs, added uh, this 4090 I just got, and that's pretty much been it, right? I'm looking for specific price points, and if I don't get them, I'm comfortable with it, right? I did my part, I got what I wanted, I set my goals, and I'm also just mainly looking for another dump. I personally really do think we'll get another dump. I don't think we're going to go down to like 15.5, but even if BTC goes down to 22, guess what? These alts are going to take a pretty good dump, right? Because BTC is specifically who's been doing so well, right? So just a lot of stuff to think about, a lot of stuff to consider, but we're a year away from the having guys. So yes, a year is a long amount of time, but you got to think about these things. So if you're thinking about getting one, not thinking about what price points make sense. Again, if you get an early, typically you get the better price. But again, research, do your thing. Every coin is different, right? There is no wrong or right answer. It's just your strategy. What makes the most sense to you, right? But a lot of factors, guys. A lot of things to think about. Hopefully I gave you some things to think about, guys. Please comment. Let me know. Let me know what you think. What is your strategy? Are you holding all? Or are you trying to just get as much hardware as you can? I know that's another strategy, too. I know a lot of you guys are just getting, like, these freaking S19 prices are borderline crazy right now. I've been seeing, like, like a lot of the smaller units, the 90, 96 terahashes units for, like, 800 bucks, 900 bucks. I know a lot of you guys are literally just stacking them, not even plugging them in. You're and this might not be a bad strategy, right? So it's probably a good like two to three X for most of those. But let me know what you guys are doing. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching, and I am out.